Hey guys, welcome back to my channel Dina Tea Grains. Even though I've already shared multiple bread recipes on my channel, I still love to explore different flour combinations to get yet another successful gluten-free bread recipe for you. Now, before we move on to the recipe, as you can see, 89.3% of my viewers haven't subscribed to my channel yet. Request you all to subscribe as it only takes a click of a button for you, but to me, it shows how much you love and appreciate the hard work I'm putting in to create these recipes. In the bowl of your stand mixer or a large bowl, add two cups of gluten-free sorghum flour, that is Jawarka Atta, one cup of gluten-free potato starch, three and a half teaspoons of xanthan gum, one four teaspoon of salt. Mix them using a whisk or a spoon or a fork so they are roughly mixed together. Now let's prepare our wet ingredients. In a small bowl, take three eggs. These should be at room temperature, else when you mix it along with the yeast mixture, it will kill the yeast. Add one third cup of oil. You can use any non-fragrant vegetable oil. Whisk these using a fork or a small whisk to break the egg yolks. Keep aside. In a separate small bowl, take one and one fourth cups of warm water. Add two teaspoons of granulated sugar, one tablespoon of dry yeast. Use a fork to mix the yeast well so there are no lumps. Cover and keep it in a warm and draft free place preferably a kitchen cabinet or switched off microwave with door shut. After about 5 minutes, the yeast would have bloomed. Time to add the wet ingredients to a flour mix. Start your stand mixer with the paddle attachment and start pouring these ingredients in any order. I am adding egg mixture followed by yeast mixture. Let everything combine on the low speed gradually increasing but stopping once or twice to scrape the dough off the sides and the bottom of the bowl so everything is well combined. Leave the machine running at medium high for three to four minutes. The dough will be a very thick batter like this. Now transfer it to the bread pan. I have oiled all the sides of the pan. And since this is a non-stick pan, I'm not using parchment paper. But if the one you're using is not non-stick, like the ones I've used in my other bread recipes, then use parchment paper after oiling the sides so the bread doesn't get stuck to the pan after baking. Use some water to spread the dough evenly in the pan and to get a nice flat top. The pan I'm using is a jumbo bread pan that one of my best friends got for me from Mexico for my love of baking breads. I'm putting the dimensions in the description box for you to refer. If you're using a smaller bread pan, then you can make two small loaves from the recipe. Leave it in the kitchen cabinet or switched off microwave with door shut to proof for 30 minutes. Do not open the door till 30 minutes. Now that the bread has proofed so well, bake it for 30 to 35 minutes in a preheated oven at 180 degrees Celsius with both the rods on. If the top starts to brown a lot before the time is up, then cover it with a small piece of aluminium foil. After 30 to 35 minutes when the bread has baked, switch off the oven and leave the pan inside for 10 minutes with the oven door partially open. After 10 minutes, pull out the bread from the pan and leave it to cool down on a wire rack for 1-2 to two hours. After 1.5 hours, the bread has cooled down completely. You can feel the crust as soft now. Slice using a bread knife. 
this bread remains soft easily for four to five days in the fridge though the slices won't be this flexible the next day because of absence of gluten but overall the bread will still be tasty and you can easily make sandwiches of your choice please try this recipe if the ingredients suit you else please feel free to explore my other bread recipes look forward to read about your experience with this recipe see you soon take care bye bye